Hello everyone, I'm Santiago Santiago and today I'm going to be testing Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart on the Steam Deck. So here we go, another Steam Deck verified game that it's only on PS5 on the console side. So 800p. Then the normal settings were dynamic resolution scaling to 30fps, so the defaults were that with 800p and as a preset it was using medium, which I was surprised about. So I'm using medium settings, but I disabled that of field because it's active during gameplay and it annoys me. <laughs> and the medium preset keeps shadows on low. So this is basically the medium preset. As you can see there. So my advice would be to keep it like this. If you don't mind some drops below 20 in very, very key parts of the prologue. Otherwise, you should be okay with FSR 2.1 on quality. So let's get to it. We're also going to try on an SD card after this. Right now, it's on the SSD. So this part is where I drop frames the most, even on my computer, when looking at all this at the same time. But then as you advance, boom, it goes back up. As you can see. So yeah, if you don't mind some drops here and there, you should be good to go without dynamic resolution. Again, where I saw most of these drops were here. I'm going to play later levels to show you other things. But it was mostly here, even on my computer. But if you use dynamic resolution, you should stay more consistently at 30. Still, on the Simdex screen it looks great. I mean, it's quality FSR, not performance like on Remnant 2. <laughs> So it looks pretty good on the Steam Deck screen with quality FSR. And it's not low settings, which is pretty surprising. On low, it improves a little bit in the beginning, but then on the rest of the game, the other levels, it was fine. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get um, 40 FPS consistently. It still dropped into the 30s. So yeah, I'm going to show you multiple saves though. So yeah, let's shoot this out. We skip the cutscene. And as you can see when fighting, when particles show up, it can drop. But again, first theory of the game things. Alright, so let's show you a separate section that is more demanding, so one moment. Okay, so now we're in the chase sequence. There's a good amount of destruction here. And you're moving through the map, which is pretty taxing. And it's surprisingly stable, actually. <laughs> I'll personally lock it to 30 frames. Because, you know, consistency and all that. We skip. Oh yeah, a weapon. Hell yep. Yeah. Let's use a shatter bomb. We need more explosions. <laughs> <laughs> Enemies ahead. As you can see, it's fine. You can still drop a little bit. But with the lock to 30, it should be more consistent. Oops. There we go. But these two atoms. Alright, let's go into the famous part where we go through multiple portals. That's going to be interesting. So, one sec. Okay, we're now in the part with the uh, portals. So, let's see what happens. 
This part is on an NVMe drive, by the way. Okay, some drops here and there. Okay, it freezes for a couple moments on the animation. Still, I mean, it took a couple seconds. No big deal. Alright, come on, load in. There we go. On those parts, I noticed that we were CPU limited, actually. If you notice, the GPU clock dropped. Still, pretty impressive. We're also tra trying this part with SSC versus micro SD card. But as you can see, it's fine, even on consistently quality FSR2. Alright, so there we go. Come on. Okay, let's go to the next save. Okay, so this is the first level after the prologue. And this one, at least for me, was less demanding than the prologue. Still, I want to keep playing the game and see if I can maintain 30s across the board. So far, so good without dynamic resolution. Just some drops here and there in the prologue, which happened on my PCs as well. Loading times are okay. Going through portals, it takes a couple seconds, at least on the ones in the cinematic. But still, working perfectly fine. And it's medium settings. The medium preset, actually. So, yeah. It's kind of nuts, if you ask me. <laughs> I was expecting this to run worse after playing it on PC. I mean, look at this. That's pretty cool. So, let's sum up before I do the comparison with the SD card. So, if you're planning to play the game, my advice is come here, allow tearing, lock it to 30. In this game, you can notice the input latency. But you can lock it to 30 like this, with a loud tearing. So it's a little bit better, but as you can see, it's 30 is across the board. Again, you'll see some drops in the prologue, otherwise, should be fine. Like the first two minutes of the game, maybe. When there's a lot of characters and you're walking through a platform. So that's my first advice, lock it to 30 like this. It'll be... Great. Then, on the settings, I have two, two recommendations. First of all, I'm using FSR 2.1 on quality. Some people do not like how FSR 2.1 looks. If you play Spider-Man, maybe you want to use IGTI, which is Insomnia Games Temporal Injection. This is also a good option. Keep it on quality. It runs a little bit better than FSR. So on performance, you can get some extra performance by using this one. Then you also have XESS that I haven't tried as of yet. But it only works if you are on full screen. It seems to be more demanding than IGTI. Yeah. So either IGTI, any of this, the one that you like the most, keep it on quality. Then if you don't like having random drops into the 30s in very specific key moments. You can enable dynamic resolution on 30, like this. So what you get here is whatever upscale method you chose, but it'll dynamically change the resolution in order to maintain 30 frames per second. In my experience, it works, but sometimes it's too aggressive. So sometimes it looks very pixelated. And I think it's a little bit too much, sometimes. But that's because I'm a, <laughs> I'm a purist at times when it comes to resolution. So quality with a 30 FPS lock is fine. Very minor drops in the upper 20s in very, very key moments. So I personally don't mind, but you do you. And on the graphics, it's basically the medium preset. So if you go through the presets, it's medium. 
I increase the texture filtering to four or eight times. And personal preference, of course, the depth of field disabled because it's on gameplay. When you aim your weapon, it's going to put everything out of focus, except in the enemy and parts of the terrain. That bothers me. And that's basically it. Those are the settings. And I use motion blur because 30 FPS. Anyway, so for this one, I'm really impressed. It runs like this on Steam Deck. I cannot wait for the next Nexus port. Um, yeah, I'm going to now show you SD card versus SSD in the portal section with a 30 FPS lock. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye guys, enjoy the comparison.